Hello everybody, I'm Sky Hawthorne and this is the SkyPod. My father and I recently encountered a Kickstarter campaign to visualize Pi as a mural on a public wall. Now this is cool not only because it's visualizing Pi, but also because the wall was formerly covered in graffiti. So they set out to raise $4,300, and they've actually ended up raising over 12000 as of now, so clearly people think it's a good idea. It's not the first mural they've done. I think they did one called the Weather Mural. I think this is a great idea. Let's take a closer look at this video on Kickstarter that I have. We're making a number um, into a color and into a shape. So each one of these shapes, um, like the red represents one, and it's uh, one-tenth of the distance between here and here. And as it gets smaller, that distance gets smaller, so the numbers are in relationship to that number. So to see it like this and then to see the negative space of pi, it's like we're, we can all look at numbers and see patterns in the numbers, but now we're able to like visualize a pattern of pi. Which it's great. I it's mean, fascinating, it's isn't it? <laughs> I really think visualizing math is cool. But the math has to be right. And there are some serious flaws in the way they are visualizing pi. One of the biggest flaws is that visualizing the digits of pi isn't the same as visualizing pi itself. Pi is a ratio. It is the circumference over the, the diameter of the circle. And that is the purest form of pi. And if you're going to be just visualizing the digits of pi, that's just an approximation. Here is a very good visualization of pi. You see a circle that is one unit in diameter, and when rolled out, its circumference is pi, approximately 3.14. But it's animated, and so it can't be on a mural. An even bigger problem is that there is no pattern in the digits of pi, and that has been proven. First in the 18th century by a man named Johann Heinrich Lambert, and then again in the 19th century by a man named Charles Hermite, using calculus at a level I haven't gotten to yet, that pi is irrational and therefore patternless. The definition of an irrational number, I believe, is that it is infinite, can't be expressed as a fraction, and there are there is no repetition. And repetition is the essence of pattern. Every fraction is either a finite string of digits or a repetitive string of digits. Like one half is 0.5, quarter is 0.25, and two thirds is 0.6666666666666 forever but it's repeating. Pi is none of those. It can't be expressed as a fraction. It can be approximated as a fraction, but there is no pattern in pi itself. The biggest problem in the way they're going to be visualizing pi is that they have laid the numbers, the digits of pi, into the golden spiral, which has a proven connection with the Fibonacci sequence, but no connection as far as I'm aware, or as I can find, with pi. They're asking their students to be looking for a pattern in this diagram they're doing. And the students may be seeing a pattern, but it's not going to be in pi. They're going to be seeing Fibonacci in the spiral, the Fibonacci sequence. It'll be helpful to do a, a quick review of Fibonacci and the golden spiral before we go on to uh, show that it does not relate to pi. Now, a few years back, I did a presentation on the binomial theorem and covered in some depth the Fibonacci sequence. It is abbreviated F sub n, but the formula is F sub n equals F sub n minus 1 plus F sub n minus 2, or in other words, each, each number in the sequence is the sum of the two preceding numbers. And with the seed values 0 and 1, it automatically starts with that. Everything else follows that pattern. And the sequence, we get that. So that's how the Fibonacci sequence is generated. And the spiral that the green school is pouring the digits of pi into 
Uh, it's actually one of two spirals, either the Fibonacci spiral or the Golden Spiral, both of which are very similar, and they actually converge on each other as they're spiraled out toward infinity. But, in fact, some people use them interchangeably. I may myself use them interchangeably, but there is a difference, and it's important to note the difference. The Fibonacci spiral is constructed of squares of Fibonacci dimensions. You have a square of dimension 1 there, and you draw a quarter circle from this point to that point, and then you make another square adjacent to that one, also of dimension 1, because the next digit in the Fibonacci sequence is 1. So you got 1 here, 1 there, 2 there, a quarter circle, 3 here, and this continues out through the Fibonacci Se uh, sequence as seen here, that is the Fibonacci spiral. The golden spiral is different but similar to the Fibonacci spiral. It is constructed in a similar way of taking squares and drawing quarter circles through them, but what makes the golden spiral the golden spiral is that side A plus side B over side A equals side A over B, side A over side B. And that's the ratio of the golden the golden spiral with all the squares. So the ratio of this square to that square is the same as that square to this square. And that ratio is uh, phi. What makes it different from Fibonacci is that the ratio of the two squares is the same as you go outward, exactly the same. And with Fibonacci, that's not the case. If you uh, divide... Um, two consecutive numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, and the higher up the Fibonacci sequence you do this, it approaches, it approaches phi, this number. So 5 over 3 is sort of close to phi, and 8 over 5 is even closer, and 13 over 8 is even closer, and at infinity, it is that ratio, and so the resulting spiral, the Fibonacci spiral, converges on the golden spiral at infinity. So another problem with the way they're visualizing pi is that by putting the digits of pi into the golden spiral, it stretches out the digits in a meaningless way. In reality, each digit to the right has one-tenth the significance of the previous digit, meaning it drops by an order of magnitude the significance each digit you move to the right. Now, this diagram doesn't accurately reflect that drop in value. They mention the negative space, looking at the negative space of pi, looking for a pattern. It distorts the negative space, too. So, in order to see, we wanted to check just to see if we could see any pattern in pi in the way the green school is visualizing it. We rationalized the color scheme a little bit more so it's not totally random. It's different hues of brown and blue. As you can see here, we have a pi going from the outside, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9. And we also have pi starting from the inside and going out. And we also have a phi. And we also here have a, a number in the same exact format. We're pouring it into the golden spiral. But this number is a purely random number generated by atmospheric noise, more random than uh, computer-generated random numbers. Let's switch back and forth between these different numbers in the spiral. And as you can see, they are all uh, similar but equally random and patternless. A true visualization of pi would be ra would be random. It would look random. You the pattern you would see is randomness. And that doesn't mean it's failed to produce a pattern, it just means the pattern that there is is random. Now here is a website I have found. It is the first four million digits of pi, and each digit has been assigned a hue. Actually, there are only two hues. Five and above are different saturations of blue, and four and below are different saturations of brown. And they're all put into this big mesh of pi. And as you can see, way zoomed out, it just looks like noise. I mean, if you zoom really way in, which I will do, 
you begin to see some little clumps of blue and green, but in the greater picture, it's just noise. And so, this is essentially the visualization of that there is no pattern in the digits. So, there are many possible visualizations of pi, and it's ultimately up to the green students and teachers at the green school to decide this. But we do have some ideas, like maybe something with the circumference and diameter of planets to sort of get across the feeling that pi is universal, or something with other circular objects like frisbees or UFOs or eyeballs, baseballs, just to get across the true nature of pi. Maybe don't rush to paint right now. I mean, maybe host a conference with some other kids from across the country. They could all come to Brooklyn, maybe. I know I'd like to come. Just to get some ideas from different viewpoints of what to do to visualize pi. Lastly, I'd like to say to the students, teachers of the Green School that I think what you're doing is really good. I, I think it's really cool. I'm just here to help you make sure that the math is correct, but I'm in full support of what you're doing. I don't intend to be negative. Um, I want to thank you for what you're doing.